Hey, what's up you guys, it's Connor, and today I'm going to be wrapping up the last books that I read in 2017 to start the year fresh and to let you guys know my thoughts on the last books that I read. I actually did something with my wrap-ups this year that no one noticed, but for the whole year I changed what color shirt I wore so that at the end of the year all of my wrap-ups would make something, so... <laughs> You guys missed out. There's a lot of books that I haven't wrapped up yet because I was busy with law school and just with life in general. So there's a lot of books to cover, so I'm not gonna talk about each one in depth. But if there's a review that I've done for it, I'll link it and I'll give you my quick thoughts. The first book in this wrap-up is gonna be Escaping Peril, which is book eight in the Wings of Fire series. This series follows different dragonettes. And the beginning arc of the series is the first five books and it follows these five dragonettes that are prophesized to predict which Sandwing is gonna be the next queen because there's three that are vying for the throne. And then after that first arc of the Wings of Fire world, there are other dragonettes that the series continues with. And this one you follow one of the main side characters that is a part of the first arc of the series. And she's actually one of the most interesting characters, so I absolutely loved this book. I really, really enjoyed this series. It's a little bit more violent than normal middle grade, but it is so much fun. I really enjoy the story, I really enjoy the characters and the messages that this middle grade series gives off. And as I said, this is one of my favorite characters of this series, so I ended up giving this book five stars. Next I picked up United as One, which is the last book in the Lorian Legacies series. The first book of the series is called I Am Number Four. They made a movie of it a while back. Basically it follows these nine alien children that are sent to Earth when their planet is being attacked by Mogadorians. And then the Mogadorians have come to Earth and are trying to hunt down the children to completely eradicate their race. And obviously the children are trying to survive. The first three children they had to be killed in order, were killed before the beginning of the first book, and now the main character of this series is number four, and he's trying to survive. I know the author is not the greatest person ever. Uh, the author's actual name is James Frey. He's the one that wrote that fake autobiography and then got famous for it, and then it came out that it was actually fake, and then he got in trouble for it, and then, well, he got in trouble with Oprah. And then with this series, he was co authoring it and then he kicked the other author off the project so not a great dude but I've been enjoying the series. I ended up giving this last book four stars I believe. It was a little bit convenient and you could tell that he was setting up the next stage in this story so the story continues with another series but I don't think I'm going to continue with that one but I did enjoy this series overall. It was really fast paced and I enjoyed the characters so I enjoyed the story but as I said, don't know if I'll be continuing. After that, I finished up the Ascendance Trilogy with The Shadow Throne by Jennifer A. Nielsen. In the first book, it follows a boy who is living at an orphanage, and this guy named Connor is going around and trying to collect boys that could resemble the prince that went missing a long time ago. And he gathers all these boys up, and then he starts training them to impersonate the lost prince. And if you're the best impersonator, you win and actually become the prince, but if you don't, then I think they kill you or you have to be a servant or something like that. They they hush you up so that you don't expose the false prince, which is the name of the first book. I thought this last book was a little bit convenient. I didn't find myself caring about the main characters as much as I did in the second book, but I enjoyed the story overall, so I gave it four stars. I'm definitely interested to read that other book that Jennifer A. Nielsen has come out with, The Scourge or something like that, so hopefully I'll be reading that in 2018. After that, I picked up Ban This Book by Alan Gratz. This book follows a girl who spends a lot of time in the library to escape her family. She doesn't get as much attention as her two younger siblings do, so she decides to spend more time by herself. And at the beginning of the book, her favorite book gets banned from the library, and then she's on a mission to get it unbanned, is that a word? <laughs> to get reintroduced into the library and to also promote banned books. I actually did an individual book review for this book, so I'll leave that up in the card symbol if you want to check it out. But I did enjoy the story. I thought the main character was believable, but at the beginning I really didn't like her. <laughs> I really like the message that there's a proper way to go about affecting change and to not take so much into your own hands, if that makes sense. There's definitely a right way to do something and there's a wrong way to do something. And I like that this book kind of talked about that a little bit. But yes, I ended up giving this book four stars. There are loads of four stars in this wrap-up. Next, I read and reviewed Paternus by Dirk Ashton. If you want to check out my individual book review, I'll leave that up in the card symbol. This one follows this girl named Fiona who is living her life, really. She's just trying to stay afloat. She works at this hospital that takes care of older people or people that don't really have their mind intact. A mental hospital. There we go. Mental ward. Hi, puppy. Thank you, buddy. Good boy. I am not even near done. <laughs> and then as the story progresses, she finds out that there are these beings in the world that are... What? What do you need? We'll film a video with you later today. 
Okay, you're fine. I love you. She finds out that there are these beings called Firstborn, and Firstborn are the children of Father, and Father is this being who has been on Earth for a very, very, very long time, and he has mated with tons of different creatures on Earth, so a lot of his Firstborn are half cow, half raccoon, half amoeba, and all of these Firstborns have incredibly long lives and enormous amounts of power, and she's trying to survive, basically, the next stage in these Firstborns' conflict between between the side that hates humans and the side that likes humans. If you want to know more in-depth thoughts, check out that review, but I really, really did enjoy this world, and I really enjoyed this story. This is one of my favorite mythology mixtures that I've read, where he takes mythology from tons of different cultures and then mashes it all together to create a new creation story for the world. It was very interesting. I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait for the second one to come out, because I will definitely be reading it. I think I gave this four and a half stars, if I'm remembering correctly. After that, I picked up Holding by Graham Norton. I did an individual book review for this as well, which I'll leave up in the card symbol. But this book follows this policeman who is investigating a body that's been found. He's from a very quiet town in Ireland. Nothing bad really happens there, so he hasn't had too exciting of a life as a guard. And then that's basically all it's about. He's going around, he's trying to figure out who murdered this person, if the person was even murdered in the first place, why the body ended up the way that it did. And then it also follows a couple of other characters that are involved with this investigation. I enjoyed the novel. I ended up giving it three stars because I felt like it was lacking something. There wasn't as much substance in here as some other mystery novels that I've read. This book gets compared to A Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling a lot, and I just think that A Casual Vacancy did the same thing, just better. <laughs> but I had a fun time while reading it. Next, I read The Dark Prophecy by Rick Riordan. This is the second book in the Trials of Apollo series. And as I say in most of my videos, I recommend reading Rick Riordan's books in chronological order because that's the best way to do it. You'll get the most out of the books if you start from The Lightning Thief and read all the way through. This one, I think, was a big step up from the first book. I got kind of annoyed at Apollo in the first book, especially because the mythology stories that were told in the first book were not that shocking. They were kind of the most well-known stories that about Apollo, so I thought that he could have done some cooler things by including some mythology stories that are less known, which is what he did in the second book. I also liked the inclusion of older characters in the story. There's a couple of older female characters in this book that are together and they are living their lives as demigods, and I really like that there's actually some older demigods in this world instead of 16 year olds and under running around and fighting monsters. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Rick Riordan is making his worlds mature a bit more and I really enjoyed that. I ended up giving this book four stars. I still don't love it as much as the original Percy Jackson series, but it's definitely improving in my eyes and I think that the third book will continue this process of getting better and better and better. After that, I don't have the book with me or else I'd show you, but I read Exile by R.A. Salvatore. That's the second book in the first trilogy in the Forgotten and Realm series. I enjoyed Exile a lot. I really liked the inclusion of a couple of new characters, namely a dwarf. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was really fun. I think he added a lot to the story and allowed Drizzt, I don't know how to say his name, grow a lot more because until that point Drizzt had been very isolated in his community. Hi bup, you are very needy today. Mwah! And with these new characters, it allowed Drizzt to become more the way that he will be in the future of the series. Definitely enjoyed that one. I think I gave that book four stars as well. After that, I read Flamecaster by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the first book in the Broken, no, the Shattered Realm series. This is the continuation of the Seven Realm series, which she did a while ago. I really, really enjoyed this continuation. Usually, I don't enjoy continuations like this as much, but I think that she did a really good job of expanding the world and expanding the magic system. Because in the Seven Realms, you basically stay within this very small area, and then now in this book you're starting to move into different areas of the world and learn about the political systems of the world. And also, I really enjoyed the characters, and I think that the next books in the series will get even better. I heard that the second book in this series doesn't follow the same characters, if I'm getting that correct. I ended up giving this book four and a half or five stars because I enjoyed it that much. I also did an individual book review for this. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it up in the card symbol. I also did a review of The Dark Prophecy, which I'll leave up in the card symbol. So that's all the cards, and the rest of the reviews will be linked down below. After that, I read The Fall of Hades. This is the sixth book in the Michael Vay series. I've fallen out of love with this series. I really loved the first couple of books, and... <laughs> Nook! What? Are you trying to tell me something? 
Okay, we'll take a break after this, and then I'll go check out what you need me to check out. I really liked the first couple of books, and then as the series went along, I didn't like them as much, and the fifth one, nothing happens in that book, and it annoyed the hell out of me. We get back on track with this one, and the story actually progresses some, and the plot moves along. I think that I will end up enjoying the last book, which is the seventh book, I believe, a lot more than I enjoyed the middle of this series. This one, I ended up giving it three and a half stars, because the plot actually moves along. I just really enjoy kids with powers and all of the kids in this book have powers based off of electricity so the main character has electricity on his skin and can shock people so <laughs> that is just so fun for me i then read the next five volumes in fairy tale which for me was 16 through 20. if you guys don't know fairy tale is one of my favorite manga series because it is the first one that really got me into manga in the first place it follows this guild called fairy tale and all of the wizards that are in fairy tale have different types of magic and they're all super weird and quirky but super fun at this point in the story you're getting to meet a lot of characters from other guilds that will play roles in the future of fairy tale and i mainly love fairy tale for the action adventure magic side as well as how goofy the characters are and how lovable they are they are all such good people and they all have such amazing friendships with each other so i just really enjoy the fairy tale manga series and the anime and i will be continuing to read the next 10 volumes will probably take me the year after that i read my first audiobook <laughs> i actually read the republic of thieves by scott lynch as an audiobook and i really enjoyed the experience i did not realize that i would actually enjoy audiobooks because it's just never been my thing for the longest time, I was like, I really hate to be read to, so I didn't think that I would like an audiobook, but I really enjoyed the narrator. I thought that he did people's voices really, really well, and he didn't even have to say which character said what because of his change in tone and change in voice. I could tell which character was which the entire time. If you guys didn't know, The Republic of Thieves is the third book in the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. It follows this guy named Locke Lamora, and he is a mastermind thief. His plans have plans have plans have plans kind of character where they know the end game basically, and it's everyone else trying to figure out how he's doing everything and to try to keep up with him. This one I didn't think was as good as the first two. You meet the main love interest of the main character, Locke, and I just really didn't like her all that much. <laughs> and I just didn't see how Locke would be so obsessed with her. I mean, I understand because of events that happen in this book and information that you get in this book, but really, <laughs> like, what? There's a lot that happens at the end of this book that's kind of crazy and all over the place and makes you really excited to read on, but, but when thinking about this book, I didn't love it. So I ended up giving it four stars as compared to the other two, which I think I gave four and a half stars to, and I think I might have given the second book five stars. Definitely recommend this book. It's one of my favorite series ever, and I really hope that we get the fourth book at some point in the next couple of years, but this one just wasn't as good for me, at least. And I gotta change my battery. <laughs> After that, I don't have the book with me right now, but I read A Dog's Purpose by W. Bruce Cameron. They came out with a movie that had some drama with if there was animal abuse or not. I haven't watched the movie yet, but I did enjoy the book. I read it on audiobook as well, and it follows this dog who keeps getting reincarnated over and over again as different dogs in different places and different situations, and basically the dog is trying to find out why he keeps getting reborn over and over and over again. He doesn't always get reborn as a boy. Sometimes he gets reborn as a girl, named, mainly a working dog named Ellie, but but most of his lives he spends as a male. So I did an individual book review for this as well, and I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. But I really enjoyed it. I liked the different lives and the different situations that you got to experience through the same dog with the same filter and see how the dog reacts to different things. There were parts that I choked up a little bit because I got so connected to him and whoever his owner was. There were times that he, I was angry because because he was getting mistreated and I didn't like that. But yeah, if you are a dog lover and you love your pup as much as I love mine, I think you'll really enjoy this book because it does have that pulls on your heartstrings a little bit, makes you sad, but it also is pretty funny and I just really enjoyed myself while reading it. I'm definitely going to continue on and read A Dog's Journey, I believe is the second book, and then I'm gonna go back and read all the individual books that they've come out with, like Molly's Story and everything like that. I enjoyed A Dog's Purpose. I think I 
gave it four stars. After that, I read The Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. As you guys know, Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite authors. I did a review for this as well, and I'll leave that link down below. But this one follows this guy who has had a lot of financial success and career success, but at the expense of his family. He left his wife and his son a long time ago, and now he's sitting in a hospital and he is deciding what he wants to do basically with this one specific situation. And to make that decision, the decision, the deal of a lifetime, he has to go to his son and tell him his story and then figure out if his life is worth anything, basically. And only the son is able to tell him. So basically, the story is written as a letter, sort of, to the son. And if you read the foreword or the preface or whatever it's called, it's not called anything, Frederick Bachman talks about this being sort of like his present self talking to his old self. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars because it's a little bit confusing. <laughs> there is some magical realism aspects that kind of threw me a little bit and I didn't really understand what was going on and I ended up reading this novella twice, once right after I finished it. So I guess I read this twice this year and I ended up giving it four stars and I'm just always curious now whenever someone reads this book what they got out of it because it's one of those books that you could read it at different points in your life and pull different things out of it or with a different mindset. So I enjoyed it but I didn't enjoy it as much as some of his other stuff. I then read The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funke, which I did a review for, and I'll leave that down in the description if you want to check it out. But I read this one on audiobook as well. It follows these two brothers, Prosper and Bo, and they have run away from their home situation. Their mother has recently passed away. Bo gets taken in by their aunt and uncle, and Prosper is kind of left by the wayside, and they want to ship him off to some boarding school so they don't have to deal with them. But the two brothers want to stay together, so they run away from Germany, I believe and they end up in Venice, Italy, where they get, I guess, adopted by this ragtag group of street urchins, and it's just about them living in Venice and trying to dodge the police as the police are trying to find them and deliver them back to their aunt and uncle. It has a little magic here and there, which I really enjoyed, and I've just really enjoyed the atmosphere of Venice and how Venice plays a role in this story a lot. I also liked the side character, the detective. He was really funny, really enjoyed him. But I've seen people pick this book up later when they're adults and not enjoy it as much, but I really enjoyed it, and I think I gave the book four stars. I then read The Emerald Blade by Stephen Kelleher. This is the second book in the Land Kiss saga. I have a individual book review for the first book and for this book, which I'll leave both down below if you want to check out either one. But it follows these characters that originated out of this place called the Valley. In this world, there are different people that have different abilities. They're called Land Kissed. And the main character, Cole, is an ember, so he is land kissed by the desert and he has the ability to wield flames on his swords. Another character is Fakin, so she has healing abilities as well as some spiritual stuff. And there are rock blood who are chosen by the mountain and they can control the earth. So there's a lot of different types of land kiss, and in this book you get even more different types of land kiss, which was really exciting and fun. And the main problem is that there are these people called sages. I guess they're more beings than people, and they have been controlling the world for a long, long time, and they have been fighting each other because each one is trying to get more and more power. And the main bad guy in the series is called the Eastern Dark, and so the characters of this series are trying to defeat the Eastern Dark and reclaim the world for themselves. I guess for people, really. <laughs> in this one, he fixed a couple of problems that I had from the first book, mainly that I couldn't picture the world as well as I was wanting to. The plot progressed really quickly, but at the expense of not being able to picture everything, so the characters would interact with a staircase that I didn't know was there, and so it would kind of jar me a little bit, and then I'd get right back in. In this one, he fixed it, but he kind of went the opposite direction, where it was too much. For the first, I don't know how many pages, about 200, I believe. It's quite a chunky book. It moves very, very slowly, and so it took me a really long time to read. But once I got past that little beginning section, little, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the Emerald Blade as a character and all of the new land kiss that we got to meet and the different cultures that these groups have that we met in this book. I really enjoyed those as well. And I just think that the world keeps getting bigger and greater and more fun and more interesting. I think I gave this four stars in the 
the end. So I definitely will be reading the third book at some point this semester because I have it at school with me already. After that, I read The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book is amazing. I gave it five stars. It's about Achilles, who is the son of a sea nymph and a mortal king. And it just follows him and his partner, Patroclus, as children when they don't really know each other as well. And then as they age, they grow closer and closer. And then as they go to Troy and all that stuff. I read this on audiobook as well. And I thought the narrator did a really good job. And I could picture everything perfectly in my mind. And even though I already know Achilles' story because I was a classical studies major and Achilles is one of the main figures in Greek mythology, it didn't detract from the novel for me at all. I really, really enjoyed this novel all the way through. I absolutely loved it. It's now one of my new favorites and I recommend it to everyone. I did an individual book review for this as well, which I will leave down below. I also read Armada by Ernest Klein. This is his newest science fiction gamer book. It follows a high school senior who is obsessed with video games, especially because his father was obsessed with video games. His mom is a gamer as well, but he really plays a lot of his dad's old games and watches a lot of his dad's old science fiction movies. Then one day he thinks he sees a spaceship flying about and then he gets wrapped up with this conspiracy of it's very tropey but that's because it pulls on a lot of classic science fiction stories so know going in that it's not a ripoff it's an homage to different science fiction stories it's not the most unpredictable thing ever but it is still enjoyable and still fun it has a lot of references to those older science fiction stories but in the end i just didn't enjoy this as much as i was hoping to and i ended up giving it three and a half stars but i still recommend it as long as you know going in that it's so heavy with the references to other things. I did a book review for this as well. <laughs> After that, I read The King Chronicles Survival Guide. I've been slowly getting all of the Rick Riordan companion books, and it took me a long time to pick up this one. I read The King Chronicles as they came out, and I really enjoyed them. And I've seen people not enjoy The King Chronicles as much as the Percy Jackson series because it is a bit different. The gods in The King Chronicles have to be hosted by human hosts, have to be hosted by what's called magicians, which are the descendants of pharaohs. If you know about Egyptian history, you would know that the pharaohs were thought to be Horus, and that's why in this series, descendants of pharaohs are the ones that host the gods. And there are multiple different stories on how the gods interrelate. Is Horus the son of Osiris, or is he his own god that happened this other way? So there's a little bit of a, a mix-up when it comes to different versions of Egyptian gods, but I really enjoyed the King Chronicles a lot, and I enjoyed this little companion book as well. It just has some extra things about the characters, and it has some things about some creatures and some weapons and stuff that are used in the series to explain it a little bit more. So I definitely think if you were confused by the King Chronicles, Chronicles, then maybe pick this up. It'll explain some things if you were confused, but I enjoyed it. I ended up giving it three stars just because it was extra, but enjoyable. Now we're getting into books that I plan to do reviews on, but I'm not sure if I want to anymore. So if you guys want reviews for these next books, let me know and I can do that. I have the notes all written out. I just haven't sat down and filmed them. I read Ice Hunt by James Rollins, which I read Amazonia, ooh, was that two years ago? And really enjoyed it. And this one I really enjoyed as well. I think I gave it four stars, maybe three and a half stars. It follows this guy who is working in Alaska as a park ranger. And he sees an airplane crash. Then he goes to save the guy and then people start trying to kill them and he gets mixed up with everything that that guy was a part of. You find out that there's this base in the polar ice caps area that has some very mysterious things going on. It's called Ice Station Grendel and the scientists that are there are trying to figure out what the heck is happening and there's some secrets and everything like that. James Rollins does a lot of biological science fiction combined with thriller mystery and one thing that I really like about his books is that it's all scientifically possible. It's not real, but it is possible, and I really, really enjoy that. I also really enjoyed the inclusion of a deaf main character in here, especially because it makes it almost even scarier, because she can't hear anything that's happening, and so people and scary things are able to creep up on her without her knowing, and people don't always keep her in the loop, so people don't look towards her and speak towards her, so she has a hard time reading lips. And instead of hearing explosions, she'll feel them or feel the heat coming off of one. So it was just really cool to see that. And I also enjoyed a lot of the Inuit influences that were in this book, but I really enjoyed this and I will definitely be reading other books by him in the future.
After that, I finished the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard trilogy with the Ship of the Dead. At the beginning of the book, it follows this guy named Magnus Chase, and he is living on the streets with his two-ish guardians who are also homeless. Rick Riordan never says if those two guys are actually together as a couple, but they act like they're a couple, but he never actually says it. So I don't know if they are or not. I'm just saying that they are. <laughs> anyway, very early on in the book, like in the first chapter or two, he ends up dying and he goes to Valhalla where he finds that he is the son of a Norse god and now he is going to have to fight in Ragnarok whenever that happens. And until that happens, he is going to train in Valhalla to become the best warrior that he can and also try to prevent Ragnarok from happening. Obviously, there's a lot more mythology involved. You meet a lot of the gods throughout the series and you follow him on his journeys as he's just trying to survive ish a second life. Overall, <laughs> I enjoyed the series. I think that Rick Ryder did a really good job of including a lot of diversity in this book. There's a gender fluid character that's introduced in the second book and the gender fluid character is the main love interest for the main character of the series, Magnus. There's also some Muslim characters as well. He did get one thing wrong at the very beginning of this book and I saw him apologize for it on Twitter. He said that during Ramadan, Muslim people couldn't bathe themselves, which apparently is not true. I don't know very much about Ramadan. He apologized for it on Twitter and he apologized if he hurt anyone. So I thought that that was really amazing. So he's definitely taking steps in the right direction to diversify his books because Percy Jackson and the Olympians, that first series is very, very white heavy. But I really didn't like this book that much. <laughs> the ending of this trilogy is so dissatisfying. I really did not like it. This whole book is build up, build up, build up, and then nothing. <laughs> where the story ended up is where I expected it to, just knowing Norse mythology, but it was still just not that great. <laughs> it was a very weak ending, and it's definitely my least favorite book that Rick Riordan has published so far. So I ended up giving this book like two and a half stars, maybe three. I think I put three, but that was being a little bit nice. So I was definitely disappointed with this one, and I think I will still do my review of it. I just went, went, went. I then picked up All Those Explosions Are Someone Else's Fault by James Allen Gardner. This is a superhero novel that doesn't take itself too seriously, and for that reason, I really enjoyed it. The main character is a genderqueer Asian American, or maybe she's Canadian. I'm not sure on that. I think she's Canadian. Anyway, Kim is in a freak scientific accent and afterwards she finds out that she has developed superpowers and now is what's called a spark because superheroes was copyrighted. <laughs> and the job of sparks is to make sure that the dark don't get too crazy and destroy the world and subjugate humans. And it follows her and her roommates as they are all exploring their different abilities and trying to save the world, basically, from a mad scientist crazy man. The beginning of this book is not as funny as I thought it was going to be. I think for the first, like, hundred-ish pages, I was like, is this gonna be really serious? Because I don't know if I'm signing up for that. But then after that, it started to get really funny and talk about how ridiculous superpowers are in comic books and everything like that. Like, there are no limits to what someone can do in comic books. Their abilities are exactly what they need at the time kind of thing, and so I really love that this kind of pokes fun at all of those things. And at the same time, it was very entertaining, and the plot was interesting as well. So I enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars, and if you guys want me to do an individual book review for this, I can do that. I then read Hounded by Kevin Hearn. This is the first book in the Iron Druid series, which is a very long urban fantasy series that I've been meaning to start for a long, long time. The main character is a guy named Atticus, and he's been alive for so long. Like, and he's the last surviving druid. He has pissed off this god a long time ago, and, and now that god is trying to take Atticus down because the god found where Atticus was hiding. But at this point, Atticus is done running, and so now he's going to take a stand and try to fend off all of these attacks by this god. I really enjoyed this because it had a lot of Irish mythology involved, which I don't see a lot in books. You see, like, fairies and stuff, but you don't see full-on druids or the Irish gods involved in a lot of books. And this one it has a lot of the Morgan, which I really appreciated because she's a very interesting goddess, slash three goddesses, if you please. But one thing I didn't expect was that there was inclusion of other pantheons and everything like that as well. So in this world, every god is real, basically. So even the Christian god, as well as Jesus, have a physical presence in our world. So I thought that that was really interesting. And I did enjoy this first book. I think I gave it four stars as well. And I have my notes to do a review. I just haven't filmed it yet. So I will leave that in the description once it goes up, but I did enjoy this. After that, I read Wild Cards 
Volume 1 by George R.R. R. Martin, or edited by George R.R. R. Martin. This is the first book in the Wild Card series, which is a mosaic series, meaning that different authors contribute to every single book, and then it's all compiled together to form one narrative for each book. This book is set in the 1940s and maybe the very beginning of the 1950s, so it has some not-so-great cultural things in here. Specifically, at some point, they use the N-word, as well as they call gay people fags. So there are some things in here that I did not really like at all, like those, as well as it's not done in a way that it's portrayed as being a bad thing, as well as the first two stories are very slow and very hard to follow. I had to go back and reread sections of the first two, which is funny because I think one of those was actually written by George R. R. Martin, but I did enjoy certain aspects of this novel. There's one character that I actually really enjoyed that changes his form every time he falls asleep. So there were sections of this book that I really enjoyed, and there were sections of this book that I really did not enjoy. So I ended up giving it three stars because of having feelings of this book on both ends and just kind of meeting in the middle. I will still be continuing on with the Wild Card series when I get the second book, because I read book 22 or something like that in the series and really enjoyed it so I know that the series goes from this to something that I really enjoy so I want to see that progression and see these authors grow as the years went along. Last two. The second to last book that I read in 2017 is Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I listened to this on audiobook. I will do an individual review for this as well because I'm running out of space on my memory card. I didn't realize how much of Norse Mythology we've actually lost. Not a lot of it actually has made it to the current day because they didn't write down things as much so a lot of it was just oral tradition passed from one person to another and so a lot of it ended up not making it. So it's interesting, especially because I read this on audiobook and the narrator was Neil Gaiman himself, and it kept that oral tradition going, so he was actually saying the Norse mythology stories and I was listening to it, so it was kind of cool in that respect as well. I think a lot of people go into this thinking that it's something else. This is published by a textbook publishing company. So don't expect some consistent novel narrative or anything like that. It's just the stories and he's just telling you the stories. So I really enjoyed it. It was funny because I read this after I read the Ship of the Dead by Rick Riordan, and he basically used every single mythology story in that trilogy, so I don't know how he would have made that series any longer than it was, because he already used up all of the known myths. <laughs> I'm sure there's some stories that are somewhere that are not included in this, but it definitely got me more interested in reading more books that pull from Norse mythology. I think I ended up giving this book four stars, and if you guys want to know more of my thoughts on it, I can film a review for you if you would like it. And the last book that I read in 2017 is the ninth book in the Wings of Fire series, Talons of Power by Tui T. Sutherland. I've already said what this series is about, and this one follows a sea wing, that's why he's covered in water, who has never really belonged, and he has a secret that he's hidden from people. It's come out in the books that are before this one, but you actually get inside of his head in this book and you see his insecurities and why he does the things that he does and how he acts is a result of certain events that have happened in his life in the past. So I really enjoyed this one too. I think I gave this one four and a half stars or four stars, something like that. I just really, really enjoy the Wings of Fire series and will continue to read the books as they come out. I think the 10th book is out and I need to read a prequel as well. Yes, I definitely recommend the Wings of Fire series. So those are all the books that I read in 2017. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below if you've read some of these books, what your thoughts are on them. If you want to see me review any of those last books, leave those down in the comments as well. And yeah, Happy New Year, guys. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.